Hey everyone, Dr. Chris here, and in today's video, I'm going to be talking about something that is very important in GIS, especially if you're looking to make connections within your data and on your map. And it's very important to do, and a lot of people do not maximize it. It's called statistics. So, without further ado, here we go. All right, here I am back in the office, and in this short video, I'm going to be talking about statistics statistics and why they are important for your GIS future. Now, I'm not an expert in statistics. I'm way better at programming, but I do understand that you have to squeeze all the little tidbits of information out of your maps, out of your features, out of your shape files, out of your tables you can so that you can show just how awesome you are at GIS and ensure that you've got a career and a future within GIS. First, I'm going to start with a little bit of a mindset and thinking. So here we go. I start many of my GIS presentations off like this, and I want you to consider these two images. Now, for some of you, you can't actually see what I see because you're colorblind. In this case, there is a five and a eight. If you squint well enough, you can see it. Now, my question to my audience with these images is always, what do you see? Now, a lot of people say they see a bunch of dots and, and making a bigger dot. And if they can see the numbers, they see a five and an eight. Now, let's get into the statistics of this. How many dots are there? How many specifically specific size dots are there? How many hues of specific dots of specific size are there? It gets a little, little more interesting when we start tearing it down into its statistical components. And this is where understanding statistics comes into effect within GIS. Now, again, I am no expert whatsoever, but I do know that if you start extracting this information, a bigger picture of your data, a bigger picture of your map, a bigger picture of your end goal starts coming out. You can harness pie charts, pictograms, line graphs, Cartesian graphs. Did I say histograms? histograms, box and whisker diagrams, frequency distributions, scatter graphs, and you can make infographics out of all of them. And this is extremely important when we're dealing with a visual media such that GIS ends up being a lot of the time, especially with cartography. It absolutely helps if you can describe the shape and distribution of the graphs that you're using. In this case, very simple. It is a Gaussian distribution, whether it is negatively skewed or positively skewed or whether it's not even a Gaussian distribution whatsoever. Why is this important? Because a lot of the times the deliverables that you give to your clients or analyze for yourself will be a lot more valuable if you squeeze every tidbit of information out of the map that you possibly can. If you had the choice, would you take the map on the left with no information or the map on the right with as much information that you can squeeze out of it? I would say it's way better to squeeze the information. All this information being squeezed out also is very important for something I harp on constantly, and that is talking about connections in, the, in GIS which is, this is pretty much where the gold of GIS is because it can connect multiple industries, it can connect multiple cash flows, it can connect people. You have to be aware of all the statistics within your map data to ensure that you can find the connections for your GIS system. I'm going to go quickly into ArcGIS Pro and show you how to make a quick histogram to analyze precision of some GPS locations from Collector App, which is the tracking within Collector App. Here I am in ArcGIS Pro, and I'm going to add in some data that I have prepared so we can look at the distribution of precision or accuracy of GPS points that were collected using Collector. And that was actually the tracking 
hosted feature layer that was added to a uh, collector for collecting in field. So I'm just going to quickly add it. I've got it stuffed into the Scratch database. It's called tracking statistics. I'm going to bring it in. Here I've got a distribution of points. Again, I'm within my po science poster project. Now, these are just sample points. They weren't actually taken here. I would just move them. But to look at the distribution, we right click on the tracking statistics. We go to create chart. We're going to go to histogram. My chart properties come up over on this side. Probably is different for you. And I'm going to add the variable number as in accuracy. Now I'm also going to pop up the number of bins. I'm also going to show the normal distribution. I'm going to show the mean and the standard deviation. So what does this chart tell us? This chart tells us that we've got a mean accuracy of 3.3 meters, a standard deviation of 0.94 meters, an extremely far off value at 25 meters. So that point would be extremely inaccurate. The type of statistics we could pull out easily from this is all these distributions of the accuracy. We would also look at the count. 2,168 points. We could get elevation changes. We can get dx, dy out of each subsequent point. We can get velocity based on those distance and time changes. We can get time changes. There is a lot of information that we can pull out of a feature like this. To recap, I briefly talked about the statistics that you should be thinking about when you are working on your GIS and all the data that is important to your map and to your project. This way you can start squeezing information out of it and making connections and finding the gold within your data. A lot of the times the statistics are ambiguous, but the more data you collect, the more that you can correlate and the more that you can find your connections. To me, it's actually pretty darn fun to do all the statistical stuff. So make sure that you're doing it on your projects. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please give me a big thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, add me to your LinkedIn, or even better, share my videos through your networks. Till next time, I'm Dr. Chris. Keep rocking.